right, let's talk a little bit about anemias. So when I'm talking about anemias, there are several different varieties, and each of them will probably be taken care of a little bit differently, but this is just going to touch a little bit on each of the uh, couple of the different types. So anemia is a low blood level in the patient, and this can be caused by blood loss of just a loss directly of blood. Um, for example, if a patient's in a trauma and they have some sort of a laceration and they're losing blood, it can be through a GI bleed. Um, it's important to note that GI bleeds can be uh, very dark, tarry stools. If that's the case, it bleeds further up and it's partially digested, that's why it's dark. Or it can be bright red blood, which would mean it's further on, closer to the rectum um, in a GI bleed. Or uh, heavy periods would be an example of blood loss. Hemolysis, that means hemo is blood and lysis is the destruction of blood, so the blood breaking down. Sickle cell anemia, I'm going to have my own video on that, but in sickle cell anemia, uh, some of the blood vessels or the, the blood cells uh, are destroyed. You can have uh, mechanical hemolysis, such as um, if patients have a IVC filter, for example, and the blood's going through the system really fast and it's hitting that metal, and sometimes it can hemolyze. Um, or immuno dis uh, immunological disorders in which the body is fighting itself, it can break down its own blood cells. Dietary uh, deficits, such as low iron low folic acid or low vitamin B12 can also lead to anemias. And it's not just having a low diet, malabsorption issues can also be a problem there. And then the decreased production of red blood cells to replace the blood cells that are being lost or destroyed, such as chronic kidney disease, uh, the body, the, uh, the kidneys um, are produce some uh, hormones that tell the body to produce red blood cells and when they're not working properly in chronic kidney disease, uh, these patients may need um, assistance producing red blood cells, or uh, patients that are having radiation or chemo and the body's not uh, reproducing it as normal. So some signs and symptoms general for anemia, okay, would be pallor, which is uh, the patient's going to be pale and their, their nail beds and then their mucous membranes are going to be a little bit pale. Uh, the patient's going to have fatigue because they're not having the, the blood to supply the oxygen to their muscles. They can have shortness of breath because they're trying to uh, take extra breaths and their heart's beating faster to make up for the fact that they have less blood and less oxygen carrying capacity. And here I told you about tachycardia, the heart's trying to compensate. And they can have dizziness, uh, they're not having as much blood flowing around, maybe less volume up to the head um, and less ability to, to get the blood where it needs to go with changes in position, which is orthostatic hypotension. Now other signs and symptoms, of course if you have a GI bleed you, you may you may see dark or dark stools or blood in the stools. With menorrhagia, your signs and symptoms could be increased uh, heavy periods. Um, so for each of these, there may be other signs and symptoms, but overall, they're going to at least have these. In your labs, you're going to notice uh, anemia, which is decreased hematocrit, uh, hematocrit and hemoglobin. Um, when you watch the hemoglobin, typically a blood transfusion, at least at my facility, is given if it's around 7 or lower, uh, but it varies by patient and by the goal for the patient. And you may see change in the mean corpuscle volume, which has to do with the size of the red blood cell. So you can see here, if the size of the blood cell is normal, uh, but you know, if they have anemia but it's normal, chances are this is an acute bleed, something uh, new, and that's because the body hasn't had time for those blood cells to really change in size. If it is microcytic, meaning it's small, it either means that they have low amounts of iron because iron is what makes the hemoglobin which makes the cells and it fills up the red blood cells so either you don't have enough iron to fill them up or this has been going on for a long time and probably the iron has been depleted by then and if they're too large it's a vitamin B12 or folic acid issue just because they're not being made correctly so treatment well it depends on the exact cause and you want to treat the cause uh, but they're going to need vitamins uh, which can be the iron, the B12, and the folic acid. They can tell us sometimes they may need erythropoietin or ARNS to tell the body, hey, let's produce more red blood cells. And if it's low enough, the patient may need blood transfusions. But the main thing that we remember right here is you have to pay attention to what the specific causes of the anemia and then focus on that. So that's just a quick summary of anemias.